Hello everyone. Welcome back to the lecture. So now we will try to understand what are the different domains that you have in the construction industry. So the first job where most of the civil engineers are going to start in the initial days of their career is a site execution job. You will become a site engineer. So in the site engineer, we have different sectors. One is you can work as a site engineer in a building construction. Second is you can become a site engineer in a road execution. Okay. Third, you can become a site engineer in the bridge execution. Of course, sometimes the, yeah, then you can even, you, all these other bridges, what you can, you know, you can become an engineer, you can become a site engineer, or a bridge engineer uh, in this particular sector. Then there's something called as water tank construction. Then we have a sewage treatment plant construction. We have canal construction. We have dams construction. We have reservoir constructions and all. So again, there you can work as a site engineer. So people, those who might have done uh, environmental engineering, or if you feel environmental engineering is something which you like, or if you have a plans of doing masters in environmental engineering, then if you want to come back and work in, as a site engineer, or even if you go to the design field also, you should visit site. Always visiting a site is something which will make you a, a good engineer. Okay, so then you can get into this particular sector also. After that, you can work as a geotechnical engineer or a geotechnical field engineer. Like you can see these people, no? These people are, you know, uh, doing uh, what you call, uh, taking some soil from here. We are going to do the testing on the soil. Uh, in the engineering days, you might have studied about liquidity index, plasticity index. You might have done all the test on the soils and all. Whatever you have studied, no? You are, when you become an engineer, when you become a field engineer, all those topics you are going to put into application. Okay. Uh, and then even uh, let's say you have done your master's in geotechnical engineering. Even then also you can work as a geotechnical site engineer for one year. Then you can move towards the design field slowly. Next, you can work as a tunnel execution engineer. Then there's something called the steel execution. Right now, whatever we spoke up to here, these are majorly your concrete ex execution. That is uh, RCC construction. Of course, in a bridge, it will be RCC and also the steel structure. But there is something called as pre-engineered buildings or let us say steel structure execution. If you have seen the metro stations, the stations where you enter, no, where your train is going to come. If you stand there, if you look at the top, they all are your steel structure construction. They are pre-engineered building like big warehouses and all, uh, manufacturing plants and all. It's a PB execution. So even you can work as a site engineer in that particular field. Now, how is this journey going to be? Initially, whenever you join in any company, you join as a graduate trainee engineer. After maybe one year of experience, you become a junior engineer. After maybe one year of experience, you become an assistant engineer. After two or two years of experience, you become a senior engineer. Then after another two years or three years of experience, you become assistant site manager. Another two years of experience, you become site manager, then senior site manager, then deputy manager, deputy project manager, deputy manager, senior project manager. Then you become an MD, VP. Of course, if you start your own consultancy, you are a CEO of that company. Or even you can reach to the CEO level. But again, whatever I've told you right now, this is a journey from zero to 25 years of experience. It's not that within three years, you don't reach to this position. Okay, even if you reach also, you cannot handle the project. It's very simple. People, those who are working in this region, in this, they should have at least 10 to 12 years of experience. Of course, all these are more than 15, 20 years of experience. Okay, but this entire journey from this stage to this stage, at, at least I would say it's a journey of 25 plus years of experience. Got it? Yeah. So whatever I've explained to you so far, all these things are from the execution point of view. Now, let's say, sir, I don't like to work on the site. I cannot take this, uh, you know, uh, hot sun. Uh, I cannot stay on the field. I'm, I'm a bit allergic to all this uh, dust and all. So tell me some office jobs. Now let us dig deep into the office job. So the first is you can become a quantity sir. Again, quantity sir is a broad term. Under that, we have a junior cost engineer. We have a, uh, the billing engineer. We have contracts and tender engineer and all. Of course, I should have written here uh, estimation engineer. Let me change it. Instead of quantity surveyor, let me write it as estimation engineer. Engineer or a few people call it as cost engineer. Yeah, now it will be fine. Yeah, so you can work as a. So you can work as a estimation engineer or a cost engineer before you start any projects. You should know what is the total cost of that project. At the time of execution, you have to accurately uh, measure the 
cost of that structure so a few people in few company they call you as a estimation engineer where you'll be knowing how to read the structural drawings you should do the calculations in the excel software suppose if you're working in a good company there are certain software like costex software plan swift software you can use that and through that you can do the quantity takeoff and all so you call them as a estimation engineer or few people call them as a cost engineer and all next you have something called as a billing engineer so once you do some work you have to uh, raise the bill and all so you have to check how much amount of work has happened based on that you are going to raise the bill so in this way we have different bills like we have subcontractor bill we have client billing and all so that you can you even you can become that engineer maybe after having one year of experience from this field after that you can become after two to three year of experience when you're good in uh, reading boq when you're good in understanding the contracts when you're good in doing all this uh, management level of work you can even work as a tender and contract engineer where you should know how to float the tender where you should know how to draft a uh, contract uh, all the terms and conditions you should be knowing after that you can work as a procurement engineer so procurement engineer is basically let's say you're working in a big construction company and let's say you want to start some work let's say you want to start a window fixing work so window let's say you're going to put a upvc window okay so whatever window it may be so it won't be ready made it won't be made at the site it has to be brought from one place let's say you're starting this work in next week so before the start of that work this material that upvc window has to reach your site so being a procurement engineer you should know which are your critical activities for that critical activities to happen on time you should know how much amount of material should be there on the site whether it, whether you receive the material or not so it's more about you know managing the entire uh, project cycle uh, so even that is also good good feel uh, you should have a good uh, communication skills and all uh, so it's more like a 50 50 job 50 percent let's say uh, 60 to 70 percent will be office job remaining 20 30 percent will be a site job where you need to go and check physically whether these people are doing it correctly and all uh, and all or not okay then we have something called as a planning engineer let's say you have one or two year of site experience then you can become a planning engineer so what a planning engineer does let's say you got a project and you are going to start the project on let's say jan 1st 2025 and they told that next year feb 8th 2026 you have to hand over the project you roughly have one year of time so it's not like you'll start work on some day and after some day again you'll plan okay we'll do that work you cannot do like that since you have this one year of time 12 months you have to plan in the next three months what work you're going to do in the next six months what work you're going to do when you're going to hand over the site to the uh, site or you should know which activity will be done on which day, how many how many days that particular activity is going to take, how much amount of manpower resources required on your site, how much amount of raw materials are required on your site. These are the things which a planning engineer should be knowing. So all these things we do in the planning engineer field. For that, you should have at least a good site execution knowledge. You should know the sequence of construction. Then you should be good in MS Excel software. Then you should be good in MS project and Primavera software. Again, directly learning software will not help you. Your fundamentals should be good. And then you can make use of the softwares. Next is you can become a quality control engineer. So whatever test you've done in your engineering days, like you did a test on materials like cement testing you had done, you had done a rebar testing, uh, whatever materials you used in the construction like bitumen, each and every material you are going to do a testing to check whether they're meeting the particular quality or not. So the engineer who is in charge of that is called as a quality control engineer. So he should uh, be good in all the IS codes and all. He should know the specification. He should know the tolerance limit. He should know each and everything. And then you can even work as a quality control engineer, which has a good demand also. There's something called as BIM field, building information modeling. Basically, uh, you are going to use software like uh, Revit architecture, Revit structure, Navy's work, then BIM to scan and all. So through that, you'll be coordinate with a, coordinating with the different stakeholders. Uh, then there's a software called as Navy's work. Uh, different stakeholders like, you know, architects, structural engineers, MEP engineers. So you are going to create a model, something like this in the software. Then there's something called as class detection and all. So it's basically an office job where you try to do the 3D modeling and all. And there's a lot of uh, technical things involved in the BIM. It has a good scope, good future also. But yeah, there is no prop, there's, uh, there's no civil engineering application in that. You might have studied about bending moment, shear force, one-way slab, two-way slab. You might have studied about all the RCC calculation, strength of material calculation. So these things you are not going to use in the BIM field and all. Okay. It's something uh, where you do a 3D modeling and all. That is how the field, but it has a good scope and all. Okay. Apart from that, that will help you. I mean, you require a BIM field so that you can see end of the day. Our main intention is to finish the project on time 
to hand over the project uh, to the uh, client within less time with more accuracy with more quality and all to achieve that we want all these people we want a estimation engineer to do the proper estimation we want a billing engineer so that he can raise the bill so that contractor can do the work on the time we require the tender and contract people in the initial days of the project so that we can at least get a project we require a procurement engineer so that there is proper procurement of the material you require a planning engineer so that he is going to properly plan you require a quality control engineer so that the proper quality of the project is maintained you require this bim people in the initial time so that there is good coordination between mechanical electrical and plumbing people on the side otherwise what happens your beam is going your beam is here your mechanical guy will come and tell like my pipe is going from here so he will tell that i will not allow uh, your uh, civil guy will tell no no i cannot remove my beam so mechanical guy will tell no no my pipe has to go from here in here so all this uh, what you call no uh, problem will happen on the side so because of that there is a loss of time then again you have to get back to your uh, client and also in order to waste the time all this time on the side even before your construction started we'll do all these things in the software like uh, navy, i mean revit architecture revit structure then there is a software called as navis work for all this class detection so even before the start of the project we'll get to know where this class detection are going to come then we'll try to uh, implement all these things so that your project is smoothly progressing okay then uh, there's something called as rmc plan you have might you might have seen this ready mix plants and all right so there also you require a site engineer uh, for the cube testing there should be a proper mixing of your concrete if you order m30 grade of concrete then, then the proper mixing of the concrete should happen you should do proper testing on the concrete and all so again you require a, a engineer in that field also then even you can work as a sales and marketing team like there's a different cement manufacturing company like acc ultratech uh, ambuja cement and all even in that in those factories you require a civil engineer so that you can maintain the quality of the cement and all so even in the sales and marketing department you can work then uh, you can become a project coordinator also so you will coordinate with the different stakeholders from the client to the uh, mechanical electrical plumbing people uh, site people planning people you are, you are like a coordinator so after maybe one or two year of experience you can even work for this particular you can look for this particular role then you can you can work as a interior fit out like whatever i mentioned it's all about the civil related work now look at here look here so you, you can see all these are the interior things what they have done so these things will be done by the interior people and the person one who is in charge of all these things is a interior site engineer or you can call this call them as the interior fit out engineer they take care of all these things okay all these things whatever interiors they have done no these people will take care of that so if you have interest in the interior field even you can work as a interior fit out engineer where you should know to take the measurements and all then you can work as a autocad draftsman again to work as a autocad draftsman you don't require a btech or a masters degree even with a simple diploma you can become a autocad draftsman and there is no much application of anything it's like you should be good in software like uh, autocad and nowadays revit and if you know how to draft that thing uh, in the software uh, you can earn good money also but there is no input from your side the structural engineer will give you a input you are going to do the detailing or the architect will give you a input and you will do the drafting of it you don't you will not use your brain and uh, do the house planning and all in a big company draftman job is just to replicate what is told by the architect or the structural engineer okay then you can become a tecla modeler whatever we spoke it spoke here Uh, let's say you are working in a steel structure okay i told you about the pre engineered building no so in the steel structure you have to do the modeling of a steel structure and all so that we make use of a software called as tecla whatever you do for the rcc for the steel we use tecla software you are going to do the modeling of it again uh, the structural engineer will give you a input like this should be the size of the plan this should be the web uh, thickness of the web this should be a bolt this will be a base plate and all and modeler is going to do a modeling so before uh, enter see this tecla modeler autocad draftsman here you don't require mtech degree here you don't require btech degree diploma people can do this ha huh. but some people with passion with btech degree they get into this degree into job it has a good scope also that doesn't mean that it has no good scope it has a scope but yeah your application your i mean there's no technical application of that only the thing is they are going to give you an um, idea like these are the things you have to do a modeling but yeah, it requires lot of efforts uh, modeling is not a easy job you have to sit you have to model each and everything again end of the day it's not that this field is upper field or this field is a, a low field all field is required because for a project to be finished on time you require the input of all these people if the tecla modeler is not there if you don't do the modeling only you cannot send the drawing to the site right simple if there is no autocad draftsman if he doesn't draft it what the site people will do on the site when you don't have drawing people cannot do anything 
then in the same way this rmc plant if you don't, if these people are not there you cannot pour the concrete on the site if bim people are not there then daily there will be a clash on the site yeah, plumbing people will blame electrical electrical guy will blame the civil and all if there is no proper quality control then uh, there is no quality uh, durability of your structure will come down if you are not planning your structure then again, if you are not planning uh, then again you cannot uh, hand over the site on time if you are not properly procuring then again there is a delay in the project again same thing so end of the day it all depends everyone's input and everyone's effort is required only then you can finish the project on this time okay end of that that is a more main motive it's like uh, your main motive in the exam is to pass the exam that is the main motive okay that is how it is your friends may tell you some answer you will read something you will copy something from your friends so these are something like end of that you should pass how you pass it's up to you either you learn completely and do it or take some help from your friends your friend will tell you okay this is some important question you read that and all end of the day motive is to pass end of the day the motive is to hand over the project to the client on time with quality and all so you require everyone's input here got it that's it so this was all about the office job next we'll get into the design jobs so design job of course a structural engineer will be there uh, in structural engineering again we have different field you can work in the building design it's a high rise building what we have it's completely made from rcc and all you can work as a high rise building rcc structural engineer even you can work as a steel design engineer you can work in the uh, pre cast industry okay then again in building we have low rise building we have high rise buildings and all but again end of the day it all comes under the structural engineer when once your building is done for a bridge we have a different uh, bridge engineer again whatever code book you use in the bridge that is different from what you use in the building for building we have is uh, uh, let's say 875 part 1 part 2 then we have is 456 and all uh, for a bridge we have irc code books and all so that is how the code book also changes and from country to country the code also will change so bridge design engineering uh, is something different for that we use software like midas uh, then uh, yeah midas is a one good software what i have heard recently uh, for building design you can e use etap software you can use stad pro software you can use save uh, you can use uh, rcdc but software will not do anything your fundamental should be good when you say you are a structural engineer there is an engineering inside you only then you'll use the software software will never do anything for you always remember then there's a road designing for that we have a civil 3d software tunnel designing i don't know what software they use but this tunnel designing also then geotechnical design we use uh, this thing uh, plaxis is one software then iit pavement is another software we use for the uh, pavement designs and all then hydrology design if you see here you can see you know there's a water which is flowing so being a hydrology design engineer you should know what is the catchment area of this then you should know what is the flow of this river and also that comes under the hydrology design so before you construct this bridge all the input should be known to you based on that you can know to what depth you can put the piers and all okay that is how so you require everyone's input then geotechnical design you can say this is called as soil nailing to make this soil stable again you, you require a lot of you know uh, what you call a lot of methods will be adopted to stabilize this soil and all so again you require a good geotechnical consultant who knows about the soil there are different uh, tests you do on the soil and th that is how it is so all this will come under the uh, design field then environmental design engineer is also required for the design of this uh, sewage treatment plant uh, stp sewage treatment uh, all these things will come under the environmental design engineer and last one is interior designing of course interior designing will not come under uh, our uh, this structure designing but uh, let's say, uh, for example, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, for example, how this bridge is going to look even before the start of the construction, you should have that 3D idea. You know? So this interior people will do that. I mean, when I say interior, this designing people will do that. Architect will do, of course, a structure engineer will do usually the big bridge one. Buildings, we go with the architects and all. Okay. So interior designing, like if I go to the previous slide here. So the fit out engineer will do the execution of this. But how, how it should come, what should be the thickness of this particular wood, what should be the depth of this, at what distance you are supposed to put, what color it has to be given. So those things will come under the interior design engineer. Okay, that's it. So this was the different field what I've explained you. And uh, in the next lecture, we'll see what are the different uh, fields that you can get into so that you can uh, generate a good income from there after you have at least two to three years of experience. So I'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.